where this starts. Today, uh, is it today or tomorrow is the end of Ramadan? Tomorrow is the end okay, of Ramadan. Okay, tomorrow is the end of Ramadan. And um, I was just with Saudi friends of mine. They were fasting. Um, some, not so much. They were drinking. I won't, I won't say names. Um, very holy day. Um, and that's where the story sort of kicks off. We all know what happened on October 7th. October, on October 6th, 2023, there was a ceasefire in place. Hamas broke the ceasefire October 7th, 1,200 people were slaughtered in Israel. 240 hostages were taken. It was the deadliest attack on Jews since the Holocaust. That was in the 1940s, 1941 to basically 1945. Uh, Israel uh, got a state in 1948. Obviously contentious. Obviously major issues with land. Major issues with who has the right to the land. That's not what we're covering today. Um, what I do know is this, on October 8th, the next day, sorry, on October 7th, we did a PBD podcast. It was PBD, myself, um, Tim Cast, Jimmy Dore, and it was breaking news. Nobody had a clue what was going on. I was following the story and I gave my perspective. What I did not expect after 1,200 people were murdered, 240 hostages were taken, was for certain people around the world to rejoice and condemn Israel after 1,200 people were slaughtered. Um, they were praising Hamas. Shocking, to say the least. But if you've ever dealt with um, Jewish hate, if you've ever studied the Holocaust, these types of things rear their ugly heads from time to time. And something like this permeated deep down below and resurfaced on October 7th, on October 8th, before Israel fired a single bullet, people around the, around the world rejoiced, and it was a reckoning for many people, for many Jews, for many like-minded individuals, for many people that believe that Israel has a light to, uh, the right to exist and to defend themselves. It was pretty shocking and pretty breathtaking. Since that day, uh, it's been a six-month ongoing conflict. We all know about it. We don't need to relitigate that. Hamas has been fighting... Um, against the IDF. People think that it's just the IDF going around killing people. Hamas is fighting back. Hamas is still firing missiles into civilian areas in Israel. Um, you know how they say it takes two to tango? Israel is not just going around raping and pillaging and killing. They are fighting Hamas. They are hunting down Hamas. And yes, innocent civilians have been killed and it is fucking tragic. But welcome to war. This is what happens. I wish that we could have world peace. I wish that people could live together. I wish that that was a realistic perspective. It's just unfortunately not. So Israel, luckily enough, has something called the Iron Dome. Um, there has been funding from the U.S. We'll have a conversation about isolationism and interventionalism, what's going on, a conversation in the United States today. Um, but this war is ongoing. That leads me to where we will start the bulk of this episode, the current negotiation talks. Everyone's calling for a ceasefire now. Everyone's calling for stopping in the fighting. I will remind you, there was a ceasefire on October 6th. Hamas broke the ceasefire. That's just fact. Um, when you have a ceasefire, what's happening right now is that there are demands and there are negotiations. Um, Israel and Hamas have both sent their teams to Egypt um, to have talks with potential peace brokers, the Egyptian government, and also the Qatari government. We all know that Qatar, which we'll talk about in a second, is houses Hamas. The, Ham the Palestinian people are poor. We'll talk about that as well. While the Hamas leadership are literal billionaires flying around in private jets. Um, so Israel, Hamas are... In Egypt, in Cairo, I believe, speaking with Egyptian officials, Qatari mediators, and uh, the director of the CIA, William Burns, as well as Secretary of State of the United States, Antony Blinken. The ball is in Hamas's court. There's an article that we're going to show you right now. Um, the, the ball is in Hamas court, and it urges militants to accept the latest ceasefire plan. Quote, unquote, this is from... Benjamin Netanyahu, like him or not, he's the longest standing Israeli prime minister ever. I believe he's on his sixth term. It's contentious and it is ugly and that is politics. Welcome to that. He is 
part of the Likud party is a right-wing coalition. And if you know anything about right-wingers, they take a pretty hard-line stance on a lot of issues. That is Bibi Netanyahu's coalition. But Israel has demands and Hamas has demands, and here's what they are. Netanyahu, he said the following. We are constantly working to achieve our goals. First and foremost, the release of hostages. So that's number one. People are asking for a ceasefire. Israel is saying, give us our hostages back and we will stop trying to kill Hamas. That's number one. He says, the release of our hostages and achieving a complete victory over Hamas. Don't get it twisted. They want to annihilate Hamas. This is war. Um, the victory requires every requires entry into Rafa and the elimination of terrorist battalions there. It will happen, and there is a date. Let me explain this. started in Gaza City. They worked their way down. They had people of Gaza move south, move south, move south to Rafa. Rafa is along the Egyptian border. There's apparently approximately over a million refugees who have been displaced um, from all over Gaza, and they're, they're saddled into Rafah, and the whole conversation is, how can you, Israel, go into a Rafah to eliminate Hamas when there's a million civilians there? Legitimate questions. By the way, do you have an uh, image or a picture or a video of the Rafah crossing border along Egypt? Do you have that? I believe I sent you that, if you can show that. So people say, why doesn't Egypt just let them in? Why is Israel being so cold and callous? Egypt, you're their, our Arab brethren. Let them in for safety. Uh, we're going to show you what this wall along Egypt looks like. You know, we've had a whole conversation in the United States for the last, I don't know, eight years about build the wall. Uh, we've learned that walls are racist, according to uh, many people that don't support Donald Trump. Um, walls are racist. Uh, I'm going to show you this image of the wall separating Egypt from uh, Gaza, and you'll let me know what you think about this wall. This is the wall that separates Gaza from Egypt. This, this wall was built by Egyptians for one reason, to keep Palestinians out. So for people saying that Israel is doing certain things, they're the ones building walls, they're leaving is, uh, Gazans, Palestinians in an open-air prison, um, so is Egypt. Uh, do we have a video as well? Don't worry about that. That's the image. So... He says there is a date to go into Rafa. Very, very controversial. The IDF General Chief of Staff, his name is Hurtsi Halavi. He says the following. We will not leave any brigades active in any part of Gaza Strip. He is talking about Hamas. Again, they're aiming to eliminate Hamas. Bibi Netanyahu said the following. Israel is ready for a deal. Israel is not ready to surrender. So Israel is willing to do a deal, but on the, on the, the paramount... The, the number one priority is getting their hostages back. I'll try to make this relevant. Uh, Israel views their citizenry, citizen, citizenry as their children, just like every country should. Um, if someone stole your kids, your children, from you, a terror organization, what would you do to get your kids back? Ask yourself that question. I'm not talking about Israel. I'm not talking about Hamas. I'm not talking about the Arab world. I'm not talking about America. I'm talking about you and your family. If someone held your kids hostage, what would you do to get your kids back? I'm assuming the answer is anything needed. That is what Israel is doing in trying to eliminate Hamas. Um, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, he weighed in on the current negotiations and the current peace arrangement, what's going on uh, ceasefire what's going on in Egypt right now. He said the following. Again, this is the um, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken of the United States. The latest proposal is very serious and should be accepted by Hamas. Exclamation point. The fact that Hamas continues to say no is a reflection of what it really thinks about the people of Gaza, which is not much at all. The ball is in Hamas's court, and the world is watching to see what it does. Again, I will remind you, this is Secretary of State Antony Blinken coming out and saying Hamas does not care about their people. Um, we all know the following. They use their people as human shields. They embed themselves into civilian populations. They hide in hospitals, in schools, in playgrounds, in mosques, 
in any civilian society, how do you eliminate somebody that's embedding themselves with families, with children, in schools, in playgrounds, in mosques, and in hospitals? Very hard to do. And Israel does deserve criticism for not being uh, precise um, in their attacks on Hamas. Um, bombing, uh, you're going to have some innocent victims. Uh, you're going to have collateral, da <coughs> collateral damage. As you guys see, I'm getting choked up over here. <coughs> should you be using a sniper? Should you be using a bomb? <coughs> what should you be using? Legitimate questions. But at the end of the day, you know, there's a famous line, you don't negotiate with terrorists. Israel is negotiating with terrorists. Hard to do. Um... <coughs> Continue to say this, Hamas wants dead people for PR. It does not care about civilians. Quote, unquote, the deader, the better. Um, <coughs> Humberto, take it away. What are your thoughts on what I just said? <clears throat> you don't negotiate with terrorists. That's what it is. Um, personally, uh, I mean, as a Christian, you know, I'm always concerned of uh, what's going on in the Middle East. I grew up in the Middle East. Yep. Um, <coughs> And terrorism is not only a problem in Israel, uh, it's a problem in Saudi Arabia, it's yes. a problem in Dubai, it's a problem uh, all over the region, it's a problem here in America. And, um, and terrorists, mm -hmm. by definition, they just want to uh, scare people into another lifestyle. Yep. And um, you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't get to, um, you know, to help, because he, they're not holding just the right. hostages hostage, they're holding the whole world hostage wow. until this is resolved. Well said. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, uh, he commented on the deadly famine that is occurring in Gaza. Uh, there is a humanitarian crisis, and it is horrible and it's tragic. People are left without few, food, without medicine, without shelter. Um, a lot of people will say this is Israel's fault. A lot of people will say this is Hamas's fault. What was Hamas expecting to happen after they attacked Israel? Uh, Trump has famously said, you punch me, I'll punch back 10 times harder. Clearly, this is how Israel and the IDF operate. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin continued to say, we are doing everything we can to encourage Israel to allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza. They've allowed, I think, 400 trucks um, every day with food, aid, assistance, nutrition, medicine um, into Gaza. It's not enough, though. I'm going to get some tea. Thank you, brother. It's all good. You're a human. Thank you, buddy. Um, <clears throat> that's Israel's proposal. Give us our civilians back. We want Hamas. We will stop the bloodshed. Again, they are at war. Hamas, they actually, you know, they say it takes two to tango. You need to have, um, uh, in order to have peace, you need to have a viable peace partner. This is what Hamas had to say. Uh, they were requesting that, that the displaced civilians return to North Gaza, along with the release of 900 prisoners, 100 of which are serving life sentences for murder. So they, the, here's what's happening. They want innocent people who have been held hostage um, to be returned to Israel. Meanwhile, Hamas wants 900 people who are in prison, 100 who are serving life sentences for murder to be released. Is that equal? Is that proportionate? I'll let you be the judge of that. So you have civilians for prisoners. Um, there you go with that. Uh, a Palestinian official said the following, that they are deadlocked, continue, will continue over Israel's refusal to end the war. Again, the refusal to end the war hinges on one thing, the hostages, guys, the hostages. Um, the withdrawal from Gaza will allow civilians to return to their homes and lift a 17-year-old blockade, allowing reconstruction. Um, have you seen images of Gaza? It's disgusting. It's horrible. What did you expect to happen, Hamas? Um, Hamas um, said the following. These steps took precedence over Israel's prime demand for release of hostages in exchange for Palestinians held in Israeli prison. So there you go, guys. Uh, it's a hostage negotiation. Um, uh, people are calling for the ceasefire. To my friends who are calling for a ceasefire, in order for the ceasefire to happen, hostages must 
be released and exchanged on both sides. So that's what they're waiting on. So to conclude this little segment right here, Israel's goal is to eliminate Hamas. It's been going on for six months, but how close are they to eliminating Hamas? Well, I'll tell you. Um, if you believe the numbers uh, on either side, here are the numbers. Hamas claims that 33,000 people have died and a majority are women and children. 75,000 have been injured. One million have been displaced. Um, Israel claims that of the 33,000, 13,000 of them were fighters. So that is a two-to-one ratio between fighters and civilians. You can fact-check this in any war. If you can have a two-to-one ratio between civilians and fighters, you are doing a good job. Many wars have three, four, five, ten-to-one. War is horrible. It's disgusting. Um, Israel, as they say, does everything they can to prevent civilian casualties. They will do roof knocks. They will do drop leaflets. They will give heads up. They will alert civilians, get out of the way we are coming. The people of Gaza know what this is. Uh, they also send text messages. Meanwhile, leader of Hamas in Gaza, Yahya Sinwar, still, be, still believed to be alive, hiding in one of the terror tunnels that they've built. Um, the situation is dire. There's not enough food. There's not enough medicine. There's not enough housing to meet the, the needs of the desperate population of Gaza, I say this with complete empathy. I pray that the hostages are returned. I pray that Israel gets what they want and they stop the bloodshed and let the people of Gaza survive. If, if you believe Bibi, and I take him at his word, Bibi Netanyahu, Israel is not stopping until they get their hostages back. You can agree with that, you can disagree with that. Those are his words. Whoa, 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 if you like that one, click right here to watch the full Sauzcast. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.